Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a review of the brand new Masters of the Universe Origins Wave 8 Clawful. Clawful is one of four new figures coming in the eighth wave, and he's popping in alongside Anti Eternia He Man, Sun Man, and a generic gray horde trooper. Now, I was able to snag Clawful and the Anti Eternia He Man off of Target's website. Uh, unfortunately, the Horde Trooper sold out super fast, which is not surprising because he's an army builder. And, you know, everybody's got to buy like 50 of them as soon as they release so nobody else can have one. I think that's personally very poor collector etiquette, but that's just me. And then as far as Sun Man, I don't currently have any intention of picking up your standard, like, core assortment Sun Man because I have the deluxe version pre-ordered for um, PowerCon. And from everything I've seen, there doesn't seem to be any sort of significant difference between the regular Wave 8 version and the Deluxe version, aside from the Deluxe version having more parts. So it seems very redundant to me, and I don't really see a reason to pick it up quite yet. Anyway, if you see my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Clawful's packaging, then we'll open it up. We'll get a good look at his mini-comics, since he is the first Wave 8 figure I'm reviewing. And then we'll see Clawful himself, we'll check out his posability, his features, his accessories. Naturally, I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today, and through the magic of video editing, I'll be comparing him to his pretty heavy mold mate, Buzz Off, who I'm reviewing like at the same time as this guy, just so you can see what parts are shared between them. And then at the end of the video, I'll get my final thoughts. So Clawful comes in your standard Motu Origins packaging. You get his name right here, you get his title, which is Warrior with the Grip of Evil. The Grip of Evil. It's very poetic. They got a little playstyle call out here. It says, make his dreadful claw grab and hold. Doesn't sound all that terrifying. <laughs> Maybe like slice and dice might have been a little cooler, but yeah, whatever. Uh, you can see the Wave 8 comic behind him, which looks like uh, Clawful and Skeletor being very scared of Sun Man. So that's interesting. Uh, you should be able to see, yeah, there's Clawful's little like mace-like weapon behind his legs there. Get a better look at that soon. And then over here, we get this really nice artwork of Clawful. So you can see him taking a swipe at Tila, while Whiplash looks on in the background. And Whiplash has been popping up in packaging a lot lately. I think they're really trying to tell us something. Like, one or two times, okay, they just want to use the character, but he's really been showing up a lot, so I would keep an eye on him. And then Tila may actually be a reference to the new two-pack figure that was just revealed and put up for pre-order of a more cartoon-accurate Tila, along with the bird Zor who in the cartoon is actually the Sorceress. So this might be a little bit of advertising for that. I mean, her armor is a little more gold, like the new toy, and she does have a sword, though she's been shown with a sword, you know, in other artwork too, so I don't know if that means anything. All right, his flavor text up top reads, Clawful's crushing brutality and cunning intellect makes him one of He-Man's more vicious enemies. Now, I think technically, because they named two traits, it should be make him, but whatever. And then we get our action feature callouts here. It says, work lever, make claw grab. So he does have like a little lever on the underside of his claw, which makes the top pincer do this. Uh, press mace into other claw, and then twist into powerful battle positions. Now for our cross cells, you get your ever-present He-Man and Skeletor. You get new hero Sun Man, the Horde Trooper here, Clawful, and anti-Eternia He-Man. So this is one of the few waves, if not the only wave, that actually has more bad guys than good guys in it. So that's interesting. Like, even if you cut out He-Man and Skeletor, the baddie's still at number the one good guy, three to one. So very interesting. I actually wouldn't mind seeing more of this because, like most toy lines, you know, they really focus on the good guys because they do sell better than bad guys, typically. Because, you know, when kids are playing, they want to be the hero, right? They want the good guys. Uh, but as an adult collector, you know, you want to really even mix, especially as some sort of completionist where you want all the characters. So I wouldn't mind seeing more, you know, evil or horde heavy waves going into the future okay so that is the packaging for clawful it's very cool as always so let's go ahead and open it up okay so now we get the mini comic for wave eight and you can see skeletor and clawful featured on the front sun man in the middle sporting a much shorter haircut than his actual figure and you get the masters of the universe logo up top but then you also get the sun man rulers of the sun logo down here and, you know, they kind of play into the title where it's Sun Man Rises. So, kind of cool. 
Uh, I won't go through this line for line, but basically He-Man is distracted fighting Horde Troopers. Skeletor is going to take advantage of this by opening a portal to other worlds to like summon baddies. And he accidentally summons Anti-Eternia He-Man. And you know, he's all like, oh ha, you can like be my new minion. And obviously that works out really well for him as you can see. Anti-Eternia He-Man makes short work of Skeletor. And as he's about to like finish him off, Sun Man shows up from one of those portals to another world. Sadly defeats Anti-Eternia He-Man with the power of his magical melanin skin. That's a new one for me, that's for sure. Uh, he sends him back to his home world, and then he sees He-Man fighting against bad guys, so he decides to fly in and help. And the comic actually just ends there. It's weird, because it ends on kind of a cliffhanger. I mean, I'm sure they win, but still, normally there's like that, you know, that resolution at the end. But that's how they chose to do it, and I was confused, because I was like expecting another page. Not a bad thing at all, but just kind of surprising. And then, as always, we get our cross cells on the back. And now we get to see Clawful in hand. And he has a fair amount going on. He gets his own individual weapon in the form of this mace, which looks suspiciously like the mace of Mossman and the one that comes in the Castle Grayskull set, but actually gets this like grip guard thing going on here that those don't have. So it's weird that it, it's so similar to being the same piece, but it's not. You don't usually see that in toys. Usually, you know, they recycle pieces to make money. So I guess you can call it a minor retool of those. That's pretty interesting. And then over here, you see he's got this specialized claw arm. I mean, he's got a claw in this hand too, but it's like a little one, and he's got this big old crusty, barnacled up claw. And here's the little lever, and it's it's a spring action. So you pull the lever back, the claw opens, and then it shuts. And you just get to do that. And it works pretty smoothly. Doesn't have a whole lot of force behind it, but doesn't really need it, it works. Uh, the head is on a double ball joint, as you'd expect. He does have a regular He-Man chest under here, but he's just got you know, two-piece armor to, I guess, appear like he's actually got a shell on him. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be an actual organic shell. So, weird choice. Uh, old Buzzoff actually got a new chest piece for his carapace, so that's kind of weird. Uh, the upper arms, I think, are just regular He-Man arms. And then the lower arms, this one, is recycled from Buzzoff. This one is all new and specialized, where, you know, this elbow piece, like, flares out, and then you get the big claw. Gets your standard little loincloth thing, and then he gets the same exact legs as Buzz Off, all the way down to the feet. So, you know, it helps sell this in, uh, insectoid slash crustacean look for him. And he's just really cool. He's goofy looking. He honestly looks more like a 90s toy than an 80s toy because of his you know, really loud colors on his face, the big eyes, the big old toothy grin. Reminds me more of something from Ninja Turtles, but... I think the design still works. I like how asymmetrical he is, where he actually gets the one big claw arm there. But then, you know, the other arm's not useless because it has a mace. So, I'm pretty pretty satisfied with what we get here. You know, plenty of detail, good posability. Tolerances are great on this guy. So, I like him. And now we get our comparison shot with his heroic counterpart, Buzz Off. And, as I said a moment ago, he has... I'd say about 50% of his tooling shared with Buzz Off. So they get the exact same legs, the woolies are the same, and they have one arm that's identical. And then they diverge here at the elbow for this arm, having, you know, either a claw, like a big claw, or just another small one that's symmetrical to this one. And then the biggest difference here is the chest. Like I said, he has his own unique chest piece. There's nothing underneath it, there's no armor, it's just shaped like this. And it has a little peg for the wings on the back. And, um... Buzz Off does seem to be a good bit taller than Clawful, and I think it's a combination of the torso and the head. Because the head is taller, it's a bigger head, and this torso being different, I think it is a longer torso, especially on the neck area there. I think the neck goes up higher. So he does end up being, you know, a decent amount taller. So it's funny how, you know, swapping out a couple parts can make that big of a difference in the height. One thing that's funny is that they both have completely different weapons, but both weapons share the motif of having this big, just, grip guard right here on the front. And they both, you know, slot very well into these little circular indentations at the base of their claws that's meant to hold them. So, yeah, they look really good together. Uh, just very, you know, creepy, buggish looking characters. You get one that's a good guy with his bright colors and everything, you know, that's soothing yellow. And then you get your angry, red, crazy crab man. And I think they both work. And this completes our look at the new Motu Origins Clawful. Or is it evil in with a shaping staff? I guess we'll never know. 
I will say overall, I like this figure. He's not the most intricate thing ever, but the features and the accessories he has work really well. I like the spring-loaded claw. I like that it works really well. I, I like the asymmetry of having the one big claw, kind of like a fiddler crab. And I like that he additionally comes with a mace to hold. It's not just the claw weapon that he comes with. And then, you know, his really nice shell-like chest armor here that may or may not be his actual shell. I'm not sure about his biology. Uh, pretty cool looking. And what's neat is you could, you know, take it off and swap it onto other characters if you want to. Uh, the creepy insectoid legs. And then the cool, like, barnacle-looking helmet right here. Not helmet, but his head. And it's got the spines that, you know, I guess presumably go down to his back. It's got the big eyes, the big old toothy just grimace going on there. I think there's a lot to like about him. I still think he looks more like a 90s toy than an 80s toy with the, you know, really almost neon-like red colors and, you know, that just goofy painted face. Very much reminds me of, like, a Ninja Turtle villain. Uh, but he's still really cool, and, you know, he is a, apparently a very, very popular character amongst He-Man fans. So a lot of people, I'm sure, will be very excited to get him. Uh, he does, for now, seem to be one of the easier figures to get as these, um, you know, new online orders are kind of popping up and then going away. The Horde Trooper seems to be the worst because, again, army building. Everyone's got to buy like 50 of them before anyone else gets a chance at them. So, thanks, guys. Uh, so, but that doesn't mean it's a bad toy. It's just that people are only buying one of them, so he's not selling out as quickly. And I think there is a lot of demand for this character. More so than I think the anti Eternity He Man or even Sun Man because they're both fairly obscure characters compared to somebody like Clawful or the Horde Troopers. So uh, if you, you know, want to pick this guy up, I think you'd be very satisfied with him. He came out really, really well. The colors are awesome. The tolerances are fantastic. The play features are great. And I think you'll have a lot of fun with him. Of course, that is just my take on Clawful. So now I want to know what you think of him. Do you think that Clawful is a really nice figure? Are you happy with the way he came out? Or do you think he's actually awful? See what I did there? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like, let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this very cool look at the new Masters of the Universe Origins Wave 8 figure, Clawful. And with all that said, I will see you next time.